Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me. This is great, good to be with you. Um, my, my story is kind of interesting because uh, a couple years ago, some friends and I uh, decided to come over to Europe and uh, backpack around, but I was the backpack, which obviously caused some heads to turn. And so people assume that my story started there. And uh, some people ask a lot of questions about that. But um, the funny thing is it, it actually started back before I was born. Um, my, my parents had two children before me, and their second uh, was named Connie. And uh, Connie, when she was about the age where she should start being able to walk on her own and, and let go of the furniture, uh, she didn't. She just kept holding on. And when she did, she would fall over. And uh, so my parents took her to the doctor, and uh, that began several months of testing. And um, after a while uh, of testing, the doctors came back with a, a diagnosis. And the diagnosis was for spinal muscular atrophy, which essentially means that the message between her brain and her spinal cord uh, gets kind of jumbled up. And so the message doesn't get to her muscles properly. And uh, so her muscles atrophy over time. And so the doctors brought my parents into a room, and they were explaining all this. And they said, if you have more children, uh, it will probably be the same story again. And this is already going to be a difficult enough life uh, for you and for your children. So we would just suggest that you not have any more children. And um, my, my parents. Uh, my parents are very good at loving people, and uh, they do it in two very different ways. Uh, my mom is a, a fighter. She's kind of the, the firecracker of the family. And uh, my dad is kind of the quiet, behind-the-scenes one. Uh, but my dad was the one to speak up. And in that room with these well-meaning doctors, he took my mom's hand and he said, well, if what you're telling us is that the worst that can happen is that we have another child like Connie that's perfectly fine with us. And about a year later, I showed up. And, uh, and just as the doctor said, um, it was the same story. About the age where I should start letting go of the furniture, um, I, well, I was already falling down. I never really got uh, to that stage of holding on to things. And, uh, so um, life went on. and. I was diagnosed, and uh, my parents decided that uh, they had three children, two of which had this rare disease. And that was fine with them, and they were going to raise us as normal as possible. Um, what that meant for them was that we were going to have extremely adventurous lives. And so we grew up traveling and um, inviting people into our homes and going out into the world and, and uh, being Although we were disabled, we were completely a part of the able-bodied community. And uh, it was just a really uh, wonderful experience that I, I didn't fully understand the, the power of at the time uh, until I grew up and moved out on my own and realized that that uh, afforded me the ability to interact with everyday life uh, just as a normal person, right? As if any of us are normal. Uh, and what that meant was, well, I'm not living with my parents now. Uh, I have to have friends help me. And uh, that, that kind of became my life, is uh, inviting people into my home and going out into the world and um, just kind of melding all that together to where I had the help that I needed, uh, not inviting people in to help, but inviting people in to be a part of my life. And realizing that if we wanted to experience this life together, then this is how it had to happen. And um, so for the past 
uh, about 12 years. Uh, been living on my own and having friends take care of me. Uh, I think out of the, uh, I, I was doing the math recently, out of the, let's say, 65 people that have helped me over the past 15 years, I think one of them might have been a trained nurse, maybe two. So most of them are, are musicians. And <laughs> that's kind of a fun side note. But, uh, uh, and and uh, all, almost all of them are nerds. So that's also fun. But um, yeah, that, that's just, it's my friends. And it's my, my community. And because of that community and, and these friends, uh, I get to live a normal life. Uh, not only that, but I get to live a full life. And so about three years ago, uh, some, no, four years ago, wow, time flies, right? Uh, about four years ago, uh, some of those friends and myself decided, you know what, we uh, want to try and do something without my wheelchair. Because we would go and have potlucks at each other's houses and uh, some of those had stairs and I couldn't get into the house and so we would just leave my chair outside. And so we thought, well, what if we actually had an adventure where we intentionally left my wheelchair behind? And uh, we decided, because we grew up on uh, Batman and Ninja Turtles, that we would go into the sewer system because uh, that's not handicap accessible at all. <laughs> So we, uh, I, I found myself laying one night on my friend's coffee table with a metal frame underneath me from an uh, old hiking backpack. And we took some hammocks and wrapped them around me and kind of came up with this very makeshift backpack. And, uh, and we went into the sewer system. It was uh, two friends, Tom and Philip, and then a couple other guys helping out. And uh, for a whole evening, we climbed through pipes so that were probably too small and way too filthy to be in. Uh, we sloshed through water up to our, our shins and uh, found out later on that there were spiders that I couldn't see, but they could. Glad I didn't know that. Uh, almost got my nose ripped off by concrete at one point. It's just, it was, you know, your average fun weekend with some, some buddies from school. And uh, about a year later, we started asking ourselves, well, what else can we do? Uh, if we can pull that off, if we can survive, what's next? Uh, so that's when we decided uh, that we would do the same thing, but above ground, uh, for three weeks in Europe. And we proceeded to uh, come up with a better backpack. Thought that was a good idea, because I wasn't going to live for three weeks in a hammock. Uh, that was going to be uncomfortable. So we came up with a, a better backpack, and uh, Tom and Philip, and then a couple of other guys, Ben and Robbie, and, and two filmmakers, uh, all came together from all over the United States. And we met up in Paris, France um, in the summer of 2016. And we had filmmakers to provide proof that what we actually did happened, because it was so completely absurd to us. Um, so that, uh, that's kind of the backstory of um, a documentary that we ended up making. And we would like to show it, uh, if that's all right. Does that sound good? Cool. I was born with a disease called spinal muscular atrophy. I'm supposed to sit in a wheelchair, take supplements, and maybe work on a computer. But instead, I let a bunch of medically unqualified musicians put me in a backpack and carry me around the world. France to visit the home of Django Reinhardt, England to explore the world of Kensington. Ireland to brave the island of Skellig Michael, and then plenty of wiggle room in there for adventure to find us, if she pleased. And yeah, it was bound to hurt, but I'm alive. 
And I've seen the world as we all were meant to see it, big and beautiful and full of life. Nothing was out of reach. There's no post-credit scene, sorry. <laughs> Not this time. But um, yeah, something that I, I really loved about the, the whole experience was that uh, every turn that we took, we never had to worry about what was accessible, what was wheelchair friendly, quote unquote. Um, and, and that was all because of the people that were with me and not only their physical ability to carry me, but also uh, their creativity and their willingness to be creative uh, with how we would pull things off. <laughs> and um, so since then, uh, we, we came home from the trip and uh, we had such a response from people asking, like I said in, in the film, about the backpack and about traveling. Uh, where did you get these friends? You know, um, I grow them in my backyard. No, uh, but we wanted to give a, a proper response to that. And so we started a nonprofit called We Carry Kevin and uh, we've been speaking, sharing our story for the past few years, uh, but we've also been working on providing practical application for people. And so what that looks like is uh, we went back to Deuter, the company that we uh, built the backpack with, and we said, hey, if, what if we tweak this uh, to be more adjustable for more needs and uh, more people? And, and so they've been working with us on that, and we're actually going to go into production uh, in the spring um, to be able to provide it uh, on, the, on the market, which is really exciting. Uh, in the meantime, we've been able to work with families individually and kind of set them up with backpacks. And, you know, the backpack uh, works for some people. It doesn't work for others. But the principle behind it, which is thinking outside the box and also uh, people helping people as true uh, accessibility <laughs> is uh, really the, the key behind it all. And so uh, that's kind of what we're running with. And so some people, we work with them on developing a, a backpack for them. Some people we, we just meet with and talk with and help them come up with other ideas. And, uh, and then we're also uh, introducing people to each other. Uh, there's a, a family that uh, we worked with. We got them a backpack for a trip out to the Rockies. Um, because the Rocky Mountains are not handicap accessible. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this family went out there with their six-year-old son who has cerebral palsy and uh, his dad got to carry him up onto peaks that uh, they would never have otherwise been able to experience as a father and son. And uh, that was really special. But when they came home, uh, I ran into the dad one day at a coffee shop and he said, uh, well, we're actually planning to go to New York next year and uh, do some camping, but then go into the city. Do you have any one in mind that we could meet up with and maybe they could help carry? And I had just heard from a guy in New York City saying, hey, if you ever come, uh, I'd love to help carry. So we connected them and said, well, I'm not coming, but there's this <laughs> other family. Turns out the guy works for the NYPD and he had like this whole group of police officers that wanted to help. And so they got like this just awesome treatment while they were in the city and got carried around by police officers, <laughs> uh, which was pretty cool. And, and they just got back from that trip. Uh, so uh, that's kind of a, just a, a microcosm uh, look at, at what we're doing uh, on a larger scale. And uh, so connecting people and uh, providing backpacks and other means of uh, accessibility outside the box. Um, yeah, we also just got back from China, uh, which was really cool. Again, coming back from Europe, we thought, well, what's next? What's the next big adventure? So that's what we did. Uh, we went to China and, and spent some time in some care centers that are for uh, orphans with disabilities. 
and provided some backpacks, but also just hung out and uh, played with the kids, rolled around on the floor, uh, which is what it's all about so, at the end of the day. Uh, anyways, uh, it's an ongoing adventure. Um, it's a great life to live, uh, being able to do something as, as crazy as this just for ourselves, for fun, and then realizing uh, how we can give back now and uh, that it's about a lot more than just a couple of guys having an, an adventure around Europe. So, um, we have a few minutes if there are any questions. Just out of curiosity, did you go with the same guys to China? Uh, so it was about half the same group, yeah. Um, so on this trip we had seven of us, uh, so four carriers, two camera guys and myself. Uh, in China we had three carriers and one camera guy and a translator, which was very important. <laughs> um, but also with that we ended up, because we had fewer carriers, and it did, I, I would say it ended up proving to be a physically more uh, taxing trip because the Great Wall, it, you know, period. Uh, not yet, we're working on that. But, um, but with that, because we had fewer carriers, we actually, uh, as we met people and interacted with people, we invited them to carry as well, uh, which was kind of cool. So the more the merrier, that's what we say. Um, do you have any big adventures planned next? Oh, well, I mean, we're here in <laughs> Ireland, so. Um, no, we, we have a few ideas of um, different places we would like to go kind of along the same lines. You know, now um, the big thing right now is, is speaking and uh, interacting with families. That's kind of become our, our new adventure. Um, but as far as our next, our, our next big trip, it'll probably be a few years, but uh, we've talked about doing a, a camping trip in New Zealand, um, like actual tents and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but we've also talked about uh, going to India and um, doing some exploring there. And, um, yeah, we, we have some different ideas. So we'll see. Uh, the big thing is with each trip, we kind of look at um, what we would like to do and then we see what doors open and then we go through. We, we wanted to go to China. We knew that at the end of the Europe trip, and it wasn't until probably like eight months later um, that we just met the, the right people and doors started opening, and so we decided to actually go. <laughs> I have one more question. Uh, based on your experience and, uh, and your family, what would you recommend uh, to parents who have uh, small children with SMA? Like, some best practices, like what do you think your parents did really well? Oh man, um, no, no, that's, that's, a, that's a big question. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of conversations with my parents over the past couple years because um, I've met a lot more families with disabilities and I, I've kind of sat down with my parents and been like, what do I say to these parents, you know? I'm, a, I'm the kid, I'm not the parent. And, um, and yeah, and my parents, um, you know, they, like I said at the beginning, they kind of raised us to be, uh, they raised us as normal as possible, uh, which took a lot more work for them, um, but it was definitely well worth it in the long run. Um, also kind of realizing that the people around you aren't going to get it fully but that doesn't mean that they don't care and that they won't help out. And so inviting people into your life, um, into your home, uh, is a big part of it. It's gonna be uncomfortable, uh, but it's also gonna be really rich in the end uh, for them as well as for you. So, yeah, yeah. That's a little bit, I, you know. Usually when I interact with families or parents, it's like, it's a few hours of really getting into the meat of it, but. That's a, a bit. <laughs> Kevin, I have a question for you. Um, so apologies for what happened on the Irish motorway. <laughs> it gave us um, an insight, though, into your mental strength and your resilience. My mental strength yeah. and resilience. Can you uh, talk to us a little bit about that? And sure. How, uh, where you developed that? Yeah, I, you know, I would say um, just like 
the, the physical strength that the guys provide to me. Um, I would say emotionally and, and mentally and spiritually, it, it's the same in that uh, we kind of have a joke that people are like, oh, you're so brave. I'm like, I have to be brave for like five seconds to say, sure, why not? And then I can, I can be yelling at them the rest of the time. What are you doing? Why are we doing this? And I'm on their back. I, you know, what am I supposed to do? Um, but, uh, you know, I think that that's the thing is having these friends that not only carry you, but uh, in the morning when you're like, I just don't feel like getting out of this bed. And, you know, they, they literally get you out of the bed and, and keep you going. And, um, and we have a lot of conversations, a lot of very open conversations about um, how we're doing emotionally with things. And, uh, and so we kind of carry each other through that. Um, and that, I think that's pretty applicable whether you have disability or not. You know, we, we all need people in our lives that can uh, speak life into us and speak truth uh, into us. And we can do the same right back. And so uh, I, would, I would like to say that I'm this brilliant person with this great, uh, was it constitution to you know, forge the way, but I could not do a single thing on my own. Uh, a question on the community that now is kind of a naturally building since you started it, and now a lot of people would reach out to you to ask for advice. Are you planning, or it's maybe it's already work in progress, uh, to build like a proper online community, like couch surfing it was, for example, or something that people can uh, they know that it, it exists and they kind of uh, ask questions or reach out and like a proper online community? Um, yeah. Oh. I don't want to get in trouble because we're at Google, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I, for me personally, I've, I've found there are a lot of like support groups for uh, parents who have kids with disabilities or individuals with disabilities, and um, there are a lot of uh, support groups online. Um, but what's really, I would say, lacking in uh, our culture right now is people actually having that face-to-face -face and interacting. And so uh, we are definitely going to provide information online and provide um, a lot of resources. But something that we're working on right now is uh, developing weekend events uh, all over the world eventually. We're, <laughs> we'll start with one. <laughs> and, uh, but um, weekend events that uh, for now we'll center around the backpack, but hopefully we'll open up more and it will be uh, families with disabilities and uh, able-bodied people who want to be involved but don't know how. And so kind of breaking down those barriers, break, um, an icebreaker dinner party, you know? You bring these friends and these friends because you're the mutual acquaintance and you say, hey, you guys would get along great and you put them in a room together. So we want to do that um, everywhere and just introduce people and and also um, promote the concept that uh, you're, you might be coming to help, or you might be coming because you need help, but these are all people involved, and people need friends, and people have feelings, and people need support on both sides. And so uh, kind of hopefully uh, speaking some truth into that, because uh, it is easy to fall into that kind of categorizing yourself of someone who needs help. And so you're here to help me. And I don't care about your feeling, you know, and, or um, my needs are more important than yours or vice versa. And uh, if we can just kind of uh, build relationships um, around friendship first and foremost, uh, then I think a lot more gets done. And it's a, a richer experience for everyone. So that's what we're working on. Yeah. It's a lovely note to finish on. Thank you very much, Kevin, for thank being here today guys. and to your team. Yeah, thank you.